important clients are corporates and, and parcels and the rural areas where people have no choice. That, those are our clients. Okay. But you have got choice. We're prepared to pay any price to get what you wanted delivered on time intact. Okay. So what that's done is created a whole parcels and logistics business outside of the post office which has also had the effect of increasing substantially the margins in that business. So what you're paying the courier today, we can deliver that same thing at like 10% of the cost of our infrastructure because it's be the lower cost producer by far. The difference is we can't deliver it. Well, we can actually, as long as we pay the trucks that bring it to us. We all use the same roads. We all use the same. There's not much difference in the delivery mechanism. We just weren't doing that. Okay, so imagine if we did start doing it. And then you start imagining what else you could use this physical infrastructure for. So you go like, well, how much time is wasted every day for people traveling to Johannesburg to collect antiretrovirals or any other chronic medicine for that matter? Why can't we deliver that in a code at a post office locally? Why can't, why aren't we paying social grants? through the post office, why is a foreign controlled company getting the business from government to pay the grants? You start saying, well, you know, my argument to the government is if you take any piece of economics out of the fiscus and put it into the private sector, that's a loss to the country. Okay, so don't. If we can do it, we should do it. Okay, so they're like, well, demonstrate that you can do it. We've got preserved business. Like, for example, all of you guys get your bank credit cards and things through couriers and stuff. That's illegal. Okay, we're the only people that have the right to deliver those things. There's one clause, though, which says that if we can't do it, then someone else can. <laughs> I mean, things like, I mean, take fines. You know, take fines. You all don't get your fines anymore. But fines is a beautiful business for the post office. So you get a photograph speeding. They send you a letter, that's one. You don't respond, they send you another letter, that's two. You don't respond, they send you a registered letter, that's five. Uh, you don't respond to that, they send you uh, uh, an intention to prosecute, that's like we're now getting up to eight, you know, and I'm not just counting, obviously, in units of one. And then they finally send a warrant for your address. So we get like five or six bites at the cherry every time you go through that, stop that uh, speed thing. But we have, we're having a fight with them. So we haven't been doing business for five months. So we sat down and settled the fight. Okay, it took us like 20 minutes to agree terms. And so your fines are coming. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you, you ultimately, one day, you're going to go to the post office. LSMs 1 to 10 are going to go to the post office. LSM 1, you're going to get your social grants. LSM 10, you're going to go and buy some easy equity stocks. Uh, in the middle, you're going to go and... In the middle, you're going to go and collect, uh, you know, I mean, I saw hard, the hard tank government wanting to do a deal with Diskem for the distribution of medicine. I'm like, why? Why don't you deal with us? Pharmaceutical margins are huge. We could cut those margins extraordinarily, and we could do a deal with you guys. Take Home Affairs. Home Affairs got 407 outlets. We've got 4,000. So which queue are you going to go to if we can deliver your ID or your passport or so on? Thank you.